Well, I'm here because we are, since a long time, trying to convince uh, local administration and major to do something in order to implement the green surface and the number of tree and forest inside our city. So I am the author of uh, a building called the Vertical Forest, who hosts uh, 20,000 plants in a high-rise building. And, well, it's a prototype of a new generation of architecture that are hosting living nature and can really contribute to reduce the presence of CO2 in the atmosphere and uh, produce oxygen, absorb the dust of the pollution, uh, reduce uh, the heating of the city. So that's the reason here. I think we need a, a holistic approach to climate change. If you really want to reverse climate change, we absolutely need to put together, for instance, all what we have done in the field of uh, renewable energies, together what we could do and should do in the field of urban forestry. Uh, and at the same time, we have to put these two perspectives uh, with an approach of uh, regenerative development. So we have to involve local communities in an economic and a social effort to make these two campaigns not simply uh, cultural but structural, connected with the life of thousands and millions of people all over the world. I think we have to learn a lot from cities like New York, for instance. Uh, it's interesting how cities are trying to establish a network and to compare their best practices in relation with climate change. Uh, C40 or, for instance, also other networks like the Commonwealth is trying to involve the 52 countries who are part of the Commonwealth in a very, very strong campaign in order to reverse climate change for instance. So what we need is a network of networks. Because I think if I really want to pursue this idea of a holistic approach to climate change, we need to compare the different experiences and different practices. And cities, sometimes more than states, are the main actors of this campaign. I could say what is not a smart city. A smart city is not a city who invests only on technology, on a kind of muscular, only mechanical way to deal with sustainability. Uh, smart city is not a city who invests on uh, information, information system, and doesn't take care of how people and citizens could be part of the construction of decision, which is another thing. A smart city is not a city where everything is connected, because one of the main problems we have everywhere in the world now is a problem of the connected solitude. So sometimes we need to try the best way to construct places where you can re-establish a personal, physical connection with people. A really, a, let me say, a human interaction. And sometimes, in order to do that, you have to stop the flow of material connection. Uh, and so, just to go back to the first point, Technology is so important, but if we don't enter in the sphere of biodiversity, of demineralization of urban surfaces, if we don't want to invest on the implementing of green surfaces, we will never arrive to realize a really smart city, so a city who can deal with climate change. We need to develop a, a comprehensive approach to climate change. Uh, I think we, we need specialization, but at the same time we need to compare the different perspectives on climate change. Cities are the responsible of climate change. 75% of the CO2 which is present in the atmosphere is produced by cities. Cities are the victims. Just think that, uh, well, 90% of our cities are coastal cities and they will be seriously eaten by the flooding phenomena caused by the rising of the level of the ocean. But cities, at the same time could really be the protagonist of a solution because I think that if they will ambition to develop this uh, holistic approach to reverse climate change they will help the humanity to do a step behind. But I have always been obsessional by trees. I think that trees uh, are individuals. They have their shape, they have their individual trajectory of life, evolution they have the intelligence 
which is quite different from ours, but it's a very, very nearby way to uh, be present in the world. And uh, well, I, since a long time, I tried to imagine and dream a possibility that a building architecture could host living nature. Not simply nature, but living nature. And I had the opportunity to design this to her building in Milan in 2006. Well, I was in Dubai, I was with my student, I was teaching at Harvard GSD, and I was with my student there observing this explosion of uh, sitting in the desert with more than 200 skyscrapers, all covered by glass, by glass panels. And well, I said, well, absolutely, we have to change. We have to change, we have to find a way to imagine a new combination of nature and, and, and city, so the natural sphere and so on. And that's it. So come back and we wrote a manifesto on vertical forest. Then we started to select the trees, the plants, the shrubs. And now we have 800 trees, 4,500 shrubs and 20,000 plants in uh, two buildings. So it's equivalent of three hectares of a real forest in a very, very small surface. It's, uh, well, it's not easy because what we do normally is to uh, design a house for trees that host also humans. So it depends on the climate condition where we find uh, different places. We first select the trees, the plants. Then we design the space, the void, for the evolution of the tree on the facade of the building. And then we start to design the interior. So, uh, it's not a, a joke, but in our higher building in Milano, we have, uh, for every human, we have two trees, uh, eight uh, shrubs and 25 plants. And then we have now a lot of birds because nesting there, so it's an ecosystem.